Hello, good evening and welcome back to The Majority Show, coming at you live every Wednesday um, at 7pm. I'm here tonight on Scotland's number one um, politics chat with my co-host David Griffiths and Mary Devlin. Good evening, everyone. Hi, everyone. What, do you got, what have you got for us tonight, Mary? Well, tonight I'm going to be talking about two men. One who doesn't know how to use a computer and the other who isn't cooking with gas. Oh, very good. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> David, what have you got? I'll be talking about one man, and in addition, I will be talking about Kirsty Blackman's genitals. Ooh. Yes, <laughs> yeah, that's a, somewhat unfortunate. I wrote that in there for you. I uh, thought you might like that. Um, anyway, okay, and I, oh, we'll all be talking about this week's news, including the most important news of the week. What could that be? I wonder. I wonder indeed. And of course, we have uh, an expanded Zoom of the week for you today. Hooray! In fact, we have a bumper, double-sized Zoomer of the week this week. Six Zoomers. Zoomers. Yeah, eventually this show will be just Zoomers. That's it. Or you could say it is already full yes. of Zoomers, not us, them. <laughs> no. Anyway, so we'll be back with uh, that and much more in just a moment. Right, welcome back to the Majority Show, Scotland's number one politics chat. And this will be a belter, yes, it will be. Um, let me see, where are we at? I'm here with the uh, co-host, David Griffiths and Mary. How's, uh, how's the weather been for you, David? For me, well, as you know, guys, I live by the coast, and to have this sustained period of high pressure is almost unprecedented in somewhere like Ardrossan. You don't really get this very often. No, it's Scottish Riviera. Exactly. So it's been terrific. And it's, it's great for me for my health. As you probably know I have a health condition uh, and it helps enormously. So I now have skin like a supermodel. So I'm very, very happy. With oh, that's very You're good. glowing, David, glowing. Glow, well, glowing like a June bride, as they say, yes. As you know, um, or some of our regular re viewers will know that we took a week off last week for Mary's birthday. Yeah. And we went on a tour down from Seamill to Sulcote to Troon. What about that? That's living the high life. We are living the life. <laughs> that yep. is living the life. Right, um, some good news. Uh, we finally got our issues with YouTube sorted. Um, a huge thank you to everyone involved in it. It was a global effort. That's what they actually said. It was a global effort that involved multiple people in YouTube. <laughs> Um, so, uh, uh, well, Mark, do you think that the flowers you sent to the YouTube <laughs> the CEO yes. helped? Yes, I do think that that may have helped. So, thank you very much uh, for your, for your attention on that. But the multiple routes actually to try and do this, we were kind of like helpless. That was the problem. We were determined. We were, determined. Uh, yes. Anyway, our channel isn't such a big channel, but if you do like it, please do subscribe and uh, and like as well because that helps us in the algorithm. But the result is that we do have access to new features, uh, one of which is the ability for anyone chatting on YouTube to donate directly to the show. So if you feel like it, please drop us a super chat or a super sticker and we'll give you a shout out and we'll see if it works. That's also the thing. All donations, of course, support the show and power our mission to make Scotland a better place, free from toxic nationalism. And as usual, I'll be dealing with all the comments tonight, so please keep them short and snappy and I'll try to get as many on screen as I can. Thank you. Indeed, and also, as usual, a huge thanks uh, go out to both UK Union Voice and to United Against Separation Facebook pages from where I know many of you are watching tonight. So on that very note, wherever you are, uh, please like, share, comment, tell your friends, extend the reach of the show at the click of one simple little button. And we also have great merchandise for sale in the majority shop. Yes. It's summer, so please show everyone what side you're on with the great majority T-shirt as modelled by our model here, Mark Devlin. <laughs> and please remember, a portion of every sale goes to supporting our work at the majority, and we really appreciate it. Right. Okay, so we have lots to talk about on the show today, and we look forward to your comments. We'll be back in just a second. Um, so this week we're going to mix things up a bit. There are so many Zoomers of these past two weeks that hasn't been possible to narrow them down to just three. So we're going to have six 
Zoomers. It says in big letters here. And we hope that you will help us decide who is the ultimate Zoomer. Okay, let's go back uh, to... Sorry, Mark, oh, just before you move yeah, on, that? we've just got a little message here from Glasgow Cabbie. He says oh. that we're sharing the show on Glasgow oh, Cabbie Facebook. Very good. Great. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thanks, Steph. That is very good. Thank you very much there. Um, mm. If you're look, looking from Glasgow Cabbie page, that's... Welcome. Hello, welcome. And uh, please feel free to chat if you can. Um, what have we got here? So let's have a roundup of the week's big news. This week, Nicola Sturgeon was on the front page of all the newspapers. And we were shocked. Shocked to hear the news, but all this fuss only showed us how human Nicola is, how she's just like one of us, just like any ordinary person struggling to get by in this world. Yes, I'm talking about Sturgeon passing her theory test. Oh, no, lady. <laughs> there we go. Congratulations. There. That's, it. That's okay. superhuman abilities there. Yeah. <laughs> nice, guys, guys. I'm, 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 aren't we missing something, though? Didn't something else happen to Nicola this week? Um, no, come on, David. Come on. <laughs> come on. Big news first. You know, I mean, a first time pass. I mean, how amazing is that? <laughs> Uh, yes. Anyway, but seriously, after a few weeks of putting sturgeon th thoughts about fostering and passing a test that 17, most 17-year-olds 17 do <laughs> uh, after half an hour studying on an app, mm -hmm. newspapers were forced to publish that she had been arrested. Oh, my God. On Sunday, a 52-year-old woman was detained as a suspect. It says here, etc., because I didn't put the thing in here. But we were all quite... Um, Shocked to hear this news, or shocked or surprised, delighted, perhaps all three at the same time. Now, due to, here's the disclaimer, now due to Scotland's restrictive contempt of court laws, no one, not even us, not you over there, are allowed to speculate on the suspect's guilt or innocence. Of course, you will get two years in prison and or an unlimited fine. So although we know you would like to, we won't be able to show such comments on the feed. Um, and this is apparently to avoid prejudicing a future trial, which means that the court thinks that potential jurors are too stupid to make decisions based on the evidence presented to them, and that perhaps watching this show once, and for us, one of you making a comment down there, would sway the decision. It seems a bit <laughs> unlikely and a restriction on free speech, but nonetheless, we have to put that disclaimer out there, so we can't say anything about who is guilty or innocent um, in that I think most of us are not really speculating. I think most of us have an opinion, but anyway. Well, that's a different matter. Can't say what that is. <laughs> Altogether. All, all David, you have done quite well with your predictions lately. You, I think you predicted mm. this. Um, oh, yeah. you, maybe you got an insight. He's definitely line. giving Gillian Sturgeon a run for her money. Oh, <laughs> yes. That's right. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> so, yeah, it's true, guys. I mean, I do put a lot of speculation up on Twitter, but I try to... Um, <laughs> If you like, categorise that separately from the predictions I made, and there are four predictions I've made this year. One it was, if, if you remember, I was literally the first one to say, look, Sturgeon's going to stand down as leader, and she did. Uh, and uh, uh, the second one was um, that she'd be arrested, and of course, that was, I think most of us suspected she would be. Uh, what, what, but what happened on Sunday, uh, in addition to me having predicted it, uh, was that I got a text very early saying, there's going to be huge news today from somebody I didn't know and who followed me but I didn't follow him. So that was the first thing really? saying, okay. right, okay, great. Do you know what it is? And he said, no, I don't really, but I think it might be WhatsApp related. Anyway, we'll see, but something big's going to happen. Half an hour later, I get one saying she's been arrested. Oh, okay. been arrested. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is so, literally, I was told this. And I asked first, because I was trying to vet the, the, the info. Is this definite? The guy said, I'll check. Yeah, it's definite. So I tried to get a hold of the press. It's really strange because just very quickly tell you this, the press did not, run with this story although it was released to them at 10 30. i know that because i spoke to someone who works in a major broadcaster they put right. the press sat on this and it was only once the police um gave their statement that they actually released anything about it so very very strange goings on but yet, yet again it was a prediction but also it was the, the unbelievably accurate info that i'm getting a lot of it from strangers it is incredible, and I can only thank them because it's making me look like I know what I'm talking about, and I'm in the know. So there you go. <laughs> well, that's good. Well, that we have asked for on yeah. this show uh, for yeah. whistleblowers to come forward, mm -hmm. and for anyone who has inside information to call either us or David. But David's good. He's on their Twitter, and he's uh, Mystic yeah, David, the Destiny too. Dave. He is the he's the man. <laughs> if you want to do that, now let's have a, a recap of the um, the story so far. Okay, so. David's going to help me out with this um, anyway. So basically, she's the third senior figure in the SNP to be arrested as part of Operation Branch Form, a Police Scotland investigation into allegations that more than £600,000 in donations for an independence campaign was misspent by the party. And she's 
detained for seven hours. You know a, bit, a little bit about how this started, David. How did this complaint come about? Right, this came about because you, you will remember, you may know the name Sean Clerkin, who is part of the Scottish resistance. Yeah. He came up with the idea, or, or it, it struck him that, hang on a minute, um, we've uh, been asked to crowdfund a lot of money. You've told us we've crowdfunded over £600,000, but the accounts, the annual accounts show uh, a residual balance of something like ninety-seven or fifty-seven thousand pounds, a little less than six hundred anyway. So questions were asked to the S and P, saying, "Where's the rest of the money?" Oh, it's woven through the accounts. Was yeah, that's right? Yes. Yeah, and then the they said, well, but, but but we could we could access it in one minute. Hang on, what was I on? Ring fence. That it's not. If it's woven through the accounts, it's not ring fence. So ridiculous non-answers, just clearly you know, uh, incorrect answers. So then. As we know, um, Mr. Murrow was arrested uh, in a blaze of publicity uh, with uh, police cars aplenty on the 5th of April. Yes. Yeah. He was held, yeah. He was held we for, were there. You mm -hmm. were there yes. because you live your Bible. You, you tell us what you saw that day, guys. Well, it was, um, well, just thought we saw the tents, of course, and the, the infamous tents on the lawn um, where uh, no doubt the contents of the house were being looked at or whatever it is. Um, so, and there were police uh, in the garden. Police were removing items, yeah. and uh, of course, all the world's the world's media. The Scottish media okay. was there. I think there were some people, maybe from CNN, something like that as well. Right. Um, I did notice that the news has been going out wider and wider. Um, I saw actually noticed saw it was in Drudge Report, which is one of the main news sites in the US. Um, that had a wee line on there: in Scottish leader arrested. So anyway, these, um, yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, it's just a, literally, it's you know, only a few hundred yards from where where we are. This is where it all happens. Addington is the centre of Scottish politics. Um, uh, anyway, so they did that, and uh, after that, Murrow, yep. he stepped down, right? Because not That's because right. of this actually, but because of the membership numbers. It was, it was after because of the Murray Foot thing, exactly right. If you remember, guys, um, yeah. he had somebody had said uh, that S and P numbers party uh, membership numbers had fallen by thirty thousand. Uh, Murray Foote, their head of communication, checked with Murrow. He was told, no, that's complete nonsense. Murray Foote put out a statement categorically denying it. It subsequently turned out that the figure was true. So Murray Foote resigned and um, Murrow had to go also. So that's why he stepped down, not because of the arrest. You're quite right. Yes. OK. And then, oh, and then, of course, the big news, the mysterious camper van. Yeah. Uh, which was discovered or impounded. Yeah, impounded from uh, Peter Morrow's uh, mother's, mother's driveway. Yeah. driveway. Where it had sat for two years, apparently. Yes. And then all this, it, seems, it does seem quite mysterious about, you know, the, the accounts. It wasn't mentioned in the accounts, or it was mentioned in the accounts. Mary, can you remember anything about that part? Yes, it's mentioned in the accounts. Got, well, there's a, eight, over £80,000 um, yes. was, was put to vehicles. That right. hadn't been there the year before. But nobody actually really said, well, why do we actually have this camper van and why is it sitting in your driveway? Uh, yes. Um, uh, when we actually nobody, don't need Nobody it. knows nothing, Mark. <laughs> That's it, exactly. <laughs> and if you that, I'll talk a little bit more about Colin Beatty and how he responded when he was asked about the camper van, which is... Quite um, illuminating, I think. But yeah, that's that's exactly right. What okay. So by this time, now we're up to April nineteenth, and Colin Beatty, SNP treasurer, gets arrested, and he has some video of him getting uh, basically spanked by one of the spads, saying, "Don't say that kind of thing." And then they wheeled Nicola in to try and cover for him. Right? Can you remember that one? Uh, that was yes. That was quite something, actually. For that later, also, yeah. He all said right, he'd never right. heard of the camper van, but then oh, yes. a few hours yeah. later, he remembered all about it. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Exactly, yes. Right. But they're all, this is the thing, I think, because they're all signatories to the accounts, right? Yes. Right, exactly. So <laughs> this is this is why we always expected that Sturgeon would be arrested at some point. Although yes. the, the nature of it's a little bit different because the, uh, when it was Murrow, they were kind of swooped in and took him off. Mm. Uh, and I think the same thing happened with Beatty as well, whereas Sturgeon was allowed to come in by appointment. Yeah, well, the, interestingly, the, the story I was told, you hear so many stories, uh, on Sunday was that three unmarked uh, police officers had turned up in a car at our house and taken her away. But I think that was speculation, to be honest. It was probably just three of our team who 
picked her up and took her into the police station because it was just, you, you don't know it's just a guy three guys in a car and a yeah, car. yeah yeah she <laughs> might have had a lawyer that's one of the issues with, this, with this, this there's a lot of speculation exactly. going on and you try to avoid it or at least at least mark out as 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 being speculation and then of course on sunday she was uh, arrested so bringing us up to date with the story so far now the rumors are abounding that uh, certain people will actually be charged nobody yeah. actually knows what the status is right now um okay so that uh, sunday afternoon i was invited on to talk tv to talk about it um with uh, kevin o'sullivan and I described the situation as a celebration and a tragedy. So let's have a wee look at that. An extraordinary turn of events. Yes, it is, certainly. And um, you have to excuse me because I can barely hear you because of the sound of champagne corks popping <laughs> all around this uh, neighbourhood. Um, basically, the, it's both a celebration and a tragedy. Uh, it's a celebration because the majority of Scots who are not nationalists and who uh, don't, who didn't vote for Nicola Sturgeon are um, finally saying that this uh, queen of virtue signalling has got her comeuppance, you know, for, for so ever since the referendum, she has been browbeating her opponents um, uh, with um, uh, and, and continuing the division that's happened in Scotland. And it's so good to see that instead, you know, the, the person who basically got her followers to call us traitors and call us bully us and talk down to us, that she has got their cup come up. And, and it's also a tragedy because so many Scots were fooled by Sturgeon. They thought that she could. Uh, they believe that she could run Scotland better and that she was morally superior to the English uh, Westminster, they like to say, uh, political class. And now that she's been arrested, it's just proof that she is not the colossus, actually, that you said, and she's just an, another politician. Just another politician, another, yeah. another, another one who uh, potentially has... Um, serious issues and questions around her. Um, so, uh, just oh, I think we should tell our viewers that if you want to oh, watch the whole interview, you can yeah, watch yeah. it on YouTube. Yeah, there's about uh, ten minutes, and it's quite uh, well. I thought it was quite good for you know <laughs> <laughs> one of your, good, these, your best Yeah, well, they're quite hard to do, you know, live TV. But anyway, that was went went fairly well. Um, so now, in addition to where were you when JFK was assassinated, or where were you when the towers fell down? We have a very own, where were you when Nicola was arrested? Uh, so, David, where were you then? I was in Presswick. At, uh, I'm staying at my sister's, and when the, when the two, I got the two messages, so in time-honoured fashion, uh, when I realised that it was a definite, I went to the local weather spoons in Presswick <laughs> to sit there, get some peace and, uh, and tranquility, and I tried, as I said, to get in touch with the press, and I was sitting there nursing a pint of left when the story came in about an hour after I broke it, that the police had confirmed that she had indeed been arrested and uh, whereupon I uh, videoed myself giving a toast to Nicola in jail. Oh, yes. that's, that's I so thought nice. that was the right thing to do, you know. Well, I say I mentioned a story on the on the interview there. But if you watch it, but I'll say it again here. Uh, um, and thank you for the people who said in the comments there that it went well. That was great. Uh, thank you for, for your support. Um, but we were in the zoo. Right. Edinburgh and Zoo. We were in Edinburgh Zoo and we we're right in front of the panda enclosure and the message came through. <laughs> I mean, not joking, panda's right there. And um, almost immediately, though, there was this kind of hubbub. There was a guy um, also in front of the pandas and we were on our phones and he, he, was, he was going on, oh, but, but he was defending Nicola. And yeah. he was, it was quite something. And he was saying, oh, she, this was revenge for something or other. And and what was the other thing? Oh, yeah, he was going on about Boris Johnson's wallpaper. He says, what about, what about Boris Johnson's wallpaper? <laughs> Oh, about Boris Johnson's wallpaper, and you know, yeah, it, was, it was kind of going all around the, the zoo, and the pandas like sleeping, all, you know, and stuff. And so on. <laughs> it was quite bizarre. Yeah, actually. It was a ridiculous situation. It was quite yeah. ridiculous. Anyway, I'm sure. Uh, um, yeah, but then just you know, of course, everyone wants to. Um, uh, Every, everyone wants to have. Everyone has their opinion on it, I suppose, and this just shows you, I suppose, to some extent that. It doesn't matter what is going on in Scottish politics. You'll still have these hardcore followers who yeah. will still believe, you know, everything, you know, that she's, um, you know, like a saint. Yes. And it feels like a cult at some times, really. Um, yeah, it's true. You're seeing this almost a, a backlash. You're seeing a lot of SNP support, a few, 
saying, oh, this will just make us doubly determined, which is just nonsense. It's not going to do any such thing, not on a broad level. But it will make some people say, oh, the MI5 have put them up to this. Oh, no. Stop being <laughs> we'll always get that, unfortunately. <laughs> but, um, but that's what happens. But yeah, people will, some people, when they're that deeply invested in a belief, they can't see any wrong in them. That's the problem, you know, particularly when it's somebody who's populist and they believe has helped them and done stuff for them. Yeah. Well, what actually, actually done, though? This is the thing. Yeah, well, the just, we'll, we'll talk about a legacy, I suppose, in a minute. What is that legacy? Um, uh, what, 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 what is it? Um, but to, uh, where we got? So, anyway, she yeah. claimed her innocence. Where's that? I've got that somewhere. Yeah. Uh, oh, innocence. Here we go. She's uh, out there in this one here. Yeah, yeah. Sturgeon, I am innocent. Sorry, we're on we're top of that. But anyway, you get the idea. Um, and uh, she said that her arrest was both a shock and deeply distressing. She added, I know beyond doubt that I am, in fact, innocent of any wrongdoing. Apparently, it's okay for the suspect to deliver, declare their innocence. The thing that really caught my eye, though, on, it, on this was this bit in the middle. Ex-leader deeply distressed and says she would never do anything to harm the SNP or the country. Mm -hmm. It's like, what? I'm like, well, I was like thinking, you, you could make up a list of all the harms that, that we think that she has uh, done to the country. And I, I just think this is just ridiculous kind of uh, hubris. It's the idea that she is so above politics that she would never harm harm the country but when of course as she's not a normal politician the, the politics to me is it's all about choices right you say to people there's a choice here we can spend this money here we can spend it here we can do this program here we can do that here we can't yeah. do everything some some you know you voted for me for example we're going to do my stuff and yes. the rest of you sorry you know that's the way it goes right but this mm -hmm. idea that she's doing good for everyone, she's the saviour of the nation, she's doing, it's, it's just ridiculous. It really is, I, mm -hmm. I think, quite, um, it's really something, I, I think, well, so it's I, so I, narcissistic. I, I don't know how she, I mean, she can say that with, that with a straight face. I mean, we could come up with all kinds of areas where she's caused harm, not least the number of drug deaths in Scotland. Oh, yeah, of course, which is still going which up. She admitted she'd taken her eye off the ball. Right. Oh, well, that's a very good, Mary. That's a very good point. Mm -hmm. She itself admitted that she didn't. She took her eye off the ball, and yep. it, so you know, so I, I did. She did some harm. I mean, the idea that a politician can't do harm. I mean, it's just it's, it's ridiculous. Totally it's really it's really it's no exactly. Politics is all about choices. Yeah, it really. Yes. Is. And she has made certain choices that have caused an awful lot of other people harm. I mean, there's a lot of arguments out there for how she's harmed women. Mm. Uh, last week, they were saying how much that she's harmed children. Yep. Um, by claiming to be the right, chief, yes. claiming to be the chief mammy, and then yep. doing absolutely nothing for them, yep. uh, especially children in care. She, you know, made promises to children, and mm. then did absolutely nothing. Yeah, I mean, it's just a whole virtue signalling thing, and this is this this it can t I called her the queen of virtue signalling on the on the on that uh, clip sure. there, and I think that's very true. It's just all absolutely. talk, it's very yeah. little action, and then to, on top of it to say, oh, I you know, but I would never harm anyone. You know, oh, this, like, the, this is the thing, particularly. I mean, the S and P uh, they they come up with populist policies, pop policies which will be popular. Uh, which sounds ridiculous, but it's true. It's all stuff about mm. free this, free that, free whatever else. That's what drives them, and it's all about getting more, being better off. Whereas real politics is about making things, making difficult choices and prioritising the spend. If you're a populist government and you're promising everything except free puppies, frankly, which is pretty much what they are doing, you have to be very circumspect in the way you spend your money, and so that makes make, that means making tough choices. But as far as the S and P is concerned, or as far as we're concerned, listening to them, they've never had to make a difficult choice of their own that wasn't Westminster's fault. So it's just complete hogwash, all of it. It's just they they are treating the electorate like fools because they're making this list of promises which they can't possibly keep. They know they can't possibly keep it. And they couldn't really keep any of them. For example, the independence referendum, that was never going to happen. Mary's yeah. right to talk about the drug deaths, which to a great extent, as I've always said, was caused by the introduction of minimum unit alcohol pricing. I guarantee it was. And, of course, cutting the budget of uh, Scotland's drug care. Yeah, so, just, yeah it's completely cut the budget. Appalling, yeah. Appallingly um, ill-conceived legislation with very, very poor choices. That's what summarised her time. She hasn't made mistakes don't just <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah. Just the idea of it is just ridiculous. I, know. I, I just I can't actually go over how how, how farcical it is that you would say that. You, you know, you'd say I it's did like, my. You might say I did my best, right? Yeah, yeah you yeah. might say that, but you don't say exactly. it didn't cause any harm. I mean, really. Right. 
No, you can't. That's right. Okay, <laughs> we move on and uh, we'll take a short break and we'll come back with reaction inside the SNP and outside. Hi. That was quite a story there, David. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it's sorry about that. Thank you for being with us on this beautiful Scottish summer evening. We continue our analysis of Sturgeon's arrest. Um, okay. Has someone you know been arrested recently? Are they a suspect in a criminal investigation? Then Interflora has a deal for you. <laughs> Send them a bouquet of flowers to express your sympathy at their terrible circumstances. I mean, come on. Yeah. So we have this guy here, what's his name, Brown? Yeah, Deputy Leader Keith Brown said, say, says that they're going to, the SNP are going to send Nicholas Sturgeon flowers. Here we go, yep. here's the clip. Great. Just had a very constructive group meeting. You may have heard the applause for the First Minister and huge support both for him and for the former First Minister to whom we've agreed to send some flowers as a mark uh, of sympathy given what she's been through over recent days. Opposition leaders say that uh, Hamza Oh, ridiculous. Yeah, I'm just going to cut that short, but it's just utterly nonsensical. I mean, really, um, this was of then, this was, uh, I don't know. I mean, did, did, have you ever heard of such a thing, Mary? Uh, you know, they've probably, I'll just make a point, they probably put it on expenses. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, sending flowers to someone who's been arrested for. Po the, well, they're, they're being accused at, le at the very least of. Uh, not doing the right thing with the funds from yep. the members. Yep. Yeah. Uh, not acting, you know, appropriately in the way they're supposed to. So, you know, if I was head of some organisation and there was accusations to the point where people were being arrested for misuse of funds or not being able to account for them or something like that, would I be sending them flowers? No, I would not. <laughs> it's utterly crazy. I've never heard of such a thing. It's like, no. you know... No. I'm mean, sending them a little know, note saying stay away. Exactly. But if you, you send somebody flowers if, if they've had illness or they've had um, a, a stroke of bad luck, maybe um, a, a oh, yes. breaking or something or, or a bereavement, something like that, or they've maybe lost a job or something like that. Yeah, or or if, they've if, they've, if they've got some influence over your YouTube account. Perhaps. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, no, honestly, I mean, if they wanted to make themselves look like spineless, gutless, Subservient toadies. They couldn't have made a better job of it by sending. Well said, David. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Of thought. But anyways, Rishi Sunak is on the case. Yeah. Issues that we should be focused on. I saw that the SNP yesterday, Mr. Speaker, had a meeting to discuss their future. But the only thing they managed to decide was that they should send Nicholas Sturgeon some flowers. <laughs> so can he tell us? Did he sign the card? <laughs> Uh, Mr. Speaker, respectfully, I think the, the Prime Minister needs to grow up. Grow up. Pot, kettle come to mind. Uh, big thing. Mm. Yes, roses are red, violets are blue. Get in the jail and your husband too. <laughs> it says here. Um, <laughs> if you are convicted. I think they're still scared of it. Yeah, quite. Yeah, I mean, so we're talking about next uh, part of this, of course, is Nicola, uh, not Nicola Sturgeon. Well, it's the same thing. Hamza Yousaf's yeah. uh, reaction and weak leadership. Yeah, um, David, do you have any thoughts on that? I'll play the clip after your thoughts. Sure. Um, to my mind, Hamza's reaction was very, very telling because he's not going to hear a single word against Nicola. And he's actually said uh, that he's made it clear today that if anybody in the party isn't prepared to back Sturgeon, unswervingly then they should get out of the party now this to me is just incredible that you can see this let's not forget Hamza Yusuf when Derek Mackay was caught texting a schoolboy he wasn't charged with anything police didn't even interview him but he stepped down immediately and what did Hamza say then Derek's done the right thing yeah yes okay fine but today Nicola Sturgeon in staying on and not not resigning after being arrested not charged she's apparently done the right thing too and they're saying, oh, there's a clear policy. Well, what the hell is it? Nobody knows. They're just making it up as they go along, as always with the SNP. Laugh a minute, nonsense, all of it. Yeah, this is, this is no, I've shown consistency too. throughout this process. People are released without charge. There's no reason to suspend them. I made that clear. It's the way I've treated other parliamentarians, for example. And that's the way I'll continue. I know why the opposition I'm... got rid of Nicola Sturgeon out of here, because, of course, she's 
thrash them in every single election. So hardly surprised at that. Does it undermine you that two of your MSPs are publicly calling for that? I, don't look, I will speak to our group. I think it's important that we have a unified voice in these matters. But I'm not going to stop MSPs from expressing their view. That is entirely their prerogative. Oh, well, Should Nicola Sturgeon voluntarily withdraw the clip? I've said already in interviews yesterday, there's no pressure on her to have to do that. Have you spoken to her about what she's Again. Yeah, Nicola Sturgeon's the most impressive politician uh, I think we've seen uh, in Europe, and she's an asset to our and to our party. It's obviously a difficult time. Uh, for, it's a very, very difficult time for her. A difficult time for our party, and personally painful to, to many of us too. Have you spoken to Nicola since Sunday? No. Right, okay, you said best politician in Europe. Um, <laughs> any thoughts? <laughs> Right, you've just read a book, Mary, about all the political leaders um, in Europe, which was has been written by our friend Tom Gallagher, who is... Uh, it will be coming out soon. Yes, and it's uh, called Europe's Leadership Famine. Decay uh, and Defiance and Decay. Yes, and it's all about European leaders. So 26 leaders in there, including Silvio Berlusconi, who just died, uh, Johnson, Macron, Zelensky... A Mitterrand, whole bunch of Mitterrand, yes, a whole load of those. How yeah. do you think? Uh, maybe I should be asking Tom this question. But how do you think uh, uh, Sturgeon, you know, stacks up against those? Well, I will say that I think the most pages are devoted to Nicola Sturgeon, right? Um, and I think she she very much fits in with exactly what uh, Tom is saying. There's there's a, a lack of moral uh, leadership. There's a lack of. Uh, you know, moral stance in yeah. leaders in Europe, and she is very much in there with them. Yes. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. You, they, they, they like to virtue signal again that they're so great and so virtuous and so on. But the question, ask, question asked earlier was, what is the legacy, right? Um, yeah. And how is she going to be remembered? Now, we often complain in this show about how uh, uh, comedians don't uh, make fun of Nicola. No, uh, certainly Scottish comedians don't. And uh, we got found this wee clip today, though, that you may enjoy. i uh, just put it on here. This is from a guy called Dominic Frisby. Uh, okay, let's see what They said she was formidable, a lady to admire, the Scottish Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> Full of balls and full of fire. All those English tyrants, she would hold them to account. She'd have another referendum with loads and loads of recounts. <laughs> she's just so brave, she's just so strong, such a success. <laughs> Nevertheless, <laughs> maybe Nicola Sturgeon's really burglar bill. <laughs> Socialist of the old school with her hands in the till. <laughs> Power crazed, praised and praised. She behaved like she was a genius. I cannot wait for her cellmate to be some bird with a penis. <laughs> fun there and we still have this issue of course with Scottish comedians which we've talked about at length on this show about yeah. not wanting to go near Sturgeon and there's so much that I think that may have been under uh, contempt perhaps um, but it's comedy there's got a fine line there isn't there between um, comedy and contempt but the whole point I think here is that where are these Scottish comedians where are they they should be on there with the wee clips Where's the wee, all the wee clips? Oh yeah, but you know, I see Sturgeon's doing the jail, and you know, whatever. It's it's just it should write itself. Um, Absolutely, anyway. any comedian could be having hours worth of material from this, I mean, weeks worth. In fact, you could do a whole season on this stuff for goodness' sake. Well, well, what's her name? Did I actually remember Tracy Ullman? She did all that stuff yeah. before, right? She was yeah, and that, but she's not scared, of course. Indeed, so. Yeah. Is Mark, that, someone's okay. asking for a link to the yes, clip. Of course, could we, we maybe we'll, put that up after the show? Yes, or well, something? of course, we'll put that on under in the description, or you can see it. It is on our Twitter feed. I think it may also be on Facebook. As well, yeah, I think it should be on Facebook as well. But I'll put a tweet, uh, uh, put a link up for that. It does make you wonder what her legacy will be? You know, a bunch 
of people laughing at her um, yeah. uh, there. They were having a good laugh. And will other people join them, David? Legacies, final thoughts on legacy. Final thoughts on legacy. I think her personal legacy is now, um, as I've said in the past, the image with which Nicola Sturgeon will always be associated Firstly, the, the, the vans outside her, uh, the, the, the tent outside her house. Secondly, the camper van. And thirdly, Isla Bryson, the rapist, uh, with a pair of leggings or a pair of tights and very clearly visible male genitalia. That's Nicola Sturgeon's legacy, trying to, very hard to put male rapists in women's prisons. That is her legacy. And that's what it comes down to, doesn't nobody, it? Exactly. Nobody can see that anybody's going to remember the baby box for five minutes, whereas every, everybody is going to remember that image as long as Nicola Sturgeon lives. So well done, Nicola. You chose this hill and you just died on it. Well, I think that's actually a very good point here because if you had a lot of policy successes, then people yeah. could possibly say, okay, but, yes, you know, she, this was a, 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 oh, well, she made a mistake there, but, we, but we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and other things. But right. that's not the case. All we've got is baby boxes and free prescriptions. That's and it. that's, you know, money. That's just money coming from the UK taxpayer anyway. So it's not so good. Indeed. Right. We're going to move on from that. We hope you enjoyed that um, section there. Uh, more than ever, we need your donations to keep the fight going on days like today and every other day. Uh, while you're enjoying yourself and sunning yourself in the in Scottish <laughs> Riviera or in Drossen. Does the Rosson have a beach? Yes, it does. Yes, it certainly does. Very Not sandy. sure. I used to go there when I was young yes. many times. And uh, while you're sunning yourself over there, um, we are busy beaving away, working we have on... have been locked up. Yes, how to do this show. So please, if you like us, please do support us. You can do that now with these Super Chat Super Stickers um, in, on YouTube. So on, Or you could give a monthly or one-time donation at our website. We'll be back in a few seconds with Zoomers. Perfect. All the way to the end. So we'll see you in a second. Right. There wasn't actually, to be honest, there wasn't that much other news as such news items. So we thought we'd wrap them all up into uh, this new this section. And we've had plenty of Zoomery in this past few weeks. So we're going to try for six Zoomers and see how it goes. Please feel free to make your comments and make you, you which one you would like known. Well, I think we might run over this tonight guys i don't know if people can stay with us that would be great because yeah, we'll we still have a lot over. more coming on the show and i think there's also some kind of midsummer madness going on out there maybe it's the heat well but, a lot uh, of crazies all the crazies are coming out right anyway so, Mary, you're going to start with okay, this. I'll start. well let me do the run the thing oh thank you there you go Right, first candidate, my first candidate for Zoomer of the Week is Colin Beatty, the former SNP treasurer and one of the notorious trio arrested along with Peter Murrell and Nicola Sturgeon mm. uh, by police who were investigating SNP funds. Uh, basically, Colin has been getting questioned by financial watchdogs about the £107,000 loan to the party from Peter Murrell. But he told them he couldn't record the loan properly to the Electoral Commission on time because he couldn't use the computer. Um, <laughs> he, he couldn't use the, the Electoral Commission system. Um, and he also had difficulties registering the repayments made by the party to Murrow and some donations in 2022. So I would just like to say at this point that I myself have actually used the Electoral Commission's reporting system. And it is a little bit tricky but what I did was when I when I found that you know there wasn't something I wasn't sure about, didn't want to do it wrong or whatever, I gave them a call or I sent them an email, and I can tell you they get back to you pretty much straight away, mm -hmm. and yes. they tell you what you need to know so that you can get it done. So I don't really know what uh, Colin's problem was, but um, anyway, the Electoral Commission documents show that Beatty had attempted to register some transactions last July, but he had failed to press the submit button. <laughs> no, right. okay. he told, so he told the regulator, I'm afraid I'm still unable to make the online system work. So every other party, political party in the UK, every third party organisation, like third party campaigner, organization like the majority and everyone who officially has to register with the electoral commission we've all managed to use it 
Yes. But poor Colin. Now, Colin was only an international banker. Oh, of course. So maybe he's, he had he's, submit button. He's, not, he's not used to computers. He's not used to filling in any financial forms. And he doesn't know that at the end you're supposed to hit the submit button. <laughs> So the uh, Scottish Tory chairman, Craig Coy, he said, the public will find it hard to believe that the SNP's treasurer, who also worked as an international banker, suddenly found it hard to operate a computer system. So I uh-huh. actually, if, if you'll allow me to, to, my theory is that he didn't hit this. Well, it, let me not say. It's a possibility. It is possible that he didn't want to hit the submit button because if you hit the submit button, you've also agreed to all the legal responsibilities and all the... Well, he's the treasurer, though, isn't, wasn't he's he? He's so? the treasurer, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I see what you're saying. Yeah, so if you don't actually submit it, then you could say, oh, well, I tried, but I was still you know, in the process. So if there's anything wrong with it, hmm. then you can say, oh, I was going to correct that before I submitted it and you know, whatever. It's just an idea, and it may be wrong. I don't know, but it's a possibility. I'm just going to go back a second to the previous segment, and there's a, an interesting comment here from Glasgow Cabby about the comedians here. Yeah. He says... I spoke to comedian Gary Folds about the fear shown by famous and semi-famous people with a large social media followings being afraid to joke about or condemn Sturgeon. Gary explained to me how it could damage his reputation and career. We are, it says, oh, indeed, we've heard the same thing in the business world. I talked about writing an open letter uh, to um, the, the Prime Minister the, urging um, a commitment to the UK and all this stuff. We sought some Scottish businesses to sign it, and they all said, no, we can't possibly sign this. We'll never get another government contract again as long mm. as... We live from the SP. It's just fear. So dreadful, really. Dreadful. Yeah. yeah. It's really terrible. Yeah. People lose their income. They'll lose their livelihood. Right. You can't really do it. So, I mean, two things strike me about BT either. What, what it reminds me also of that. This stuff about, oh, I forgot. It reminds me of, you know, these mafia movies when all the old mafia dons turn up with, you know, breathing apparatus in court, making out that they're desperately oh, ill. Yes. Uh, oh, yes. Right. <laughs> either part of that or else, frankly, guys. I mean, this is what we were saying. He's, he was interviewed that time. Did you know anything about this camper van? Not nothing at all. And you could see the spy behind him going mental. And then ten minutes later, he said, "Oh, I've just had a call from the whip's office, and now I remember the camper van." You know, it just it's ludicrous. <laughs> so the, the point I would make here is, like in um, all the presidents, when which is the movie I quote more than any other in this show, Deep Throat was talking to Woodward, and Woodward says, "Is this something to do with Donald Segretti?" And he said, "You don't think all of this was the work of little Donald Segretti, do you?" To, to completely dismisses it, and that's how I feel about this. I have no idea if anyone is guilty, none whatsoever. But I think it's going to be a very big sell to pretend to, to, to persuade the Scottish people that all the stuff that happened with this financial um, jiggery pokery was all the work of Colin Beatty. Because I don't think anyone's going to buy that for one second. And that's not to suggest he's innocent or guilty. I have no idea. I don't even know if there's going to be a charge. Don't know. So don't know. But. Yes. That's the only point I would make. Yes. Yeah, well, a, but I don't think, at the same time, I don't think anyone's going to buy the idea that he didn't know he was supposed to hit the submit button. Yeah, yeah, unless, yeah unless he's putting it on or something. Who knows? Yeah, exactly. The dog, the dog ate my homework. Yeah, so that's, 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 like. that's, that's, that's what it reminds me of. Right. Yeah, okay. Right. So that was the first one. Call the first one. Yep, okay. okay. Um, doing we'll that. I think David's up. You're up next. I am. Okay, okay, guys, my first candidate for Zoomer is SNP MP Angus B for Brendan McNeil. Now, like his colleague Kirsty Blackman, of whom more later, Angus has a lengthy record of idiotic statements, and that is, of course, when he's not crashing his car and or having sexual liaisons with much younger females outside of his marriage. Anyway, this week, the hot weather has clearly inspired Angus's creativity because, firstly, he reacted to the news that the SNP government in, in Holyrood is seeking to extend uh, these... Uh, marine protection areas, um, he, his answer, Angus's answer, bring him in, this is SNP policies, the Scottish government should prioritise independence over idiotic policies such as HPMEs. Scotland has 200 miles of territorial water, but the devolved parliament contains only responsibility for 12. Someone in Holyrood just realised this, it seems. Hashtag give me strength. So I've got this one, yeah. So yeah. this is it. This as, as my old gran would say, oh, that man's angry. You know, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Why does he get so annoyed about it? But, of course, this is just further evidence of the fact that the, the splits in the, the SNP are widening all the time. And as I've said before from sources that, uh, that I've heard, Westminster SNP MPs think that the party's Hollywood MSPs are a bunch of complete idiots. Anyway, today, Angus came up with probably his best tweet ever. And this is what it said. Sat up at back of Commons today, surrounded by MPs of various politics, Interestingly, backbench members of five parties 
agreeing that Stephen Flynn is the most capable oh, of all three sure. leaders at Prime <laughs> yeah, yeah. To, think, uh, to, to which oh, yeah, I think the expression one, yeah. is, I, so they did. This is like the classic thing, with this so, so, social media fantasy we see all the time, you know, like the guy saying, I was in a restaurant today with my 18-year-old son and he said, Daddy, why doesn't the British government give the, the Scottish people full fiscal autonomy so we can utilise the limitless resources at our disposal? And everyone cheered and the ma restaurant owner made him the manager. This nonsense. <laughs> Guys, we're not fools. Don't talk to us like this. As if anybody, imagine a Labour MP saying to Stephen, hey, God, your guy's a lot better than ours, isn't he? My goodness, I'll say to um, Angus um, McNeil. Well, I mean, what, you're, you're really going to, who, is it, who on earth is ever going to say that about Stephen Flynn? <laughs> oh, yeah, like, Raul, look. Oh, my God, he's so great. Oh, oh wow. His, his shiny, he's his the shiny, best his shiny, ever. His shiny skull head <laughs> just it's, makes it so, it adorable. You know what I mean? Exactly. Come on. So, so apparently this so somebody said it to Angus today, and four people from other parties say, you're right there, mate. Oh, yeah, you're right there, pal, yeah. <laughs> okay, no, sorry, mate. We don't yeah, do make believe much. in this yeah, show. He's stroke. He's stroke. He's stroke. He's right. Yeah, so, yeah. Yes. That's definitely. Angus. Angus. As you say in Scotland, mind. he's definitely Haven. Oh, <laughs> Haven is right. Oh, yes. He's a leather. Yes. Indeed. So that's why he's my Zimmer nomination number one. I don't think too much about blowing their trumpets. That's not really yeah, yeah, as you want to uh, uh, talk about too much. Yes. Okay. So can't beat it in that now. Okay, right. mine's coming up. Uh huh. A wee bit of a challenge keeping track of all these. <laughs> there's so many, and I tell you, there could have been a lot more. Oh, Absolutely, I mean, there was. No, I've two. There's two. Another two that I've actually got videos for. Oh, uh, well, I mentioned that one actually. First of all, Lawrence Slater, not knowing right from left. It's just, I mean, ridiculous nonsense and stuff like that. I mean, it's just. <laughs> and she's not even one of our nominees. She didn't yeah, even yeah, make it this right, week. Okay, well, put us in as a mention. Here we go, here, guys. I've just got it right here. I was looking for the clip, and okay, why not? Minister. Um, I thank the member for the question, and despite the chuntering on my right, I have outlined very clearly to this. Sorry, on my left. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> despite the chuntering to my left. Despite the chuntering to my left. The, I mean, really? Thank you. I have outlined very clearly to the. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Right, anyways. Okay. But that's not. Is it, it's not. Is it much enough? For us, <laughs> we only she didn't even this make is, it with that. These are the select Zoomers we're talking about today. All right, right my nomination for Zoomer of the Week is Pat Kane. Pat Styles himself, as a nationalist intellectual. Um, oh, anyway, that well, Mark. Yep, something's happened with the sound. Yes, what's the It just suddenly cut out the yeah, sound. Sound cut out in my ear. Can you hear me, David? I, I can note very faintly, Mark. Oh, really? Yeah, that's strange. Oh, yeah, that sounds it. better. Right. That sounds that, better. Well, maybe something wrong with this cable. Can you hear me right, now? You hold the cable yeah. in. <laughs> right. That's, right. These are good cables. I don't know what's going on They're there. the best. Right. right. Anyway, Pat styles himself as a nationalist intellectual. Decided to come to the defence this week. Come This week, decided to come to the defence of Nicola Sturgeon. Here we go here. Let the law and investigations take their course. But the person I've known for over 30 odd years has integrity and core values and devoted her life to serving Scotland, even when Scotland itself didn't step up to its potential. Just wanted to say. Like? So it's Scotland's fault? Oh, this is, this is the thing that's so bizarre about it here. I think, you know, Scotland didn't step up to its potential. It's a completely condescending. What was that potential? If, you know... <laughs> You don't get to a better country by denigrating your neighbours. You don't get to a better country by building a wall between people. You don't get to a better country right. by having grifters, gropers and no-hopers in charge. You don't get to a better country by t treating right. politicians as saints. It's fool still thinks that nationalism is a noble endeavour instead of all of the above. 14 years of disaster, yeah. arrests and a complete collapse of the party for the, re for the reason of nationalism. nationalism. All the reasons, centralisation, excessive centralisation to a leader, um, people, uh, people against people, all people, the division. Well, yeah, division, dividing people and putting um, people into positions of power that they shouldn't actually have because of this goal, this magical goal that Pat wants. Yeah. Everything will be better once we get um, in independence. It's like, no, it will not. Look at what's around you. Anyway, the reality is Scotland did fulfil its potential by rejecting all of the above. It's just that he doesn't yeah. like it. For yeah, someone who exactly. styles it being so smart, for someone who styles himself as being so smart, he's no half daft. 
<laughs> well, guys, I mean, I've said this before, but you know my view of Pat Keane. Failed musician, dreadful writer, just oozes sanctimony from it's every uh, court. Sanctimony. He winds, yeah. you know, I mean, he makes Gary Lineker look like Christopher Hitchens. This is ridiculous. And as I said, <laughs> his appearance in BBC Scotland debate night last week was, as Mark Twain said, the worst thing I've ever heard since the orphanage burned down. It was just <laughs> oh, terrible. Really, it was appalling. So, no, I can't. He's not, not for me. Sorry, Pat. No. Back to it's, you know, it's, it's these styles. It's, uh, this is the problem. I've said it many times. It's the smug self righteousness of them. They think they really are something better. That she's better. It wasn't. It wasn't that that the people of Scotland rejected nationalism. It was like Scotland wasn't good enough. It's like, come on, get a grip. <laughs> I mean, Scotland, Scotland, yeah, didn't rise up to yeah, it. Didn't didn't rise up to yeah. its potential to Nicola. you know put Nicola Sturgeon, who has been arrested, um, you know, in, as as a leader for life. I mean, come on. Right. Anyway, right. breaking this up a little bit. Um, you can things you can do right now to support the show. You can make a donation to the majority. That's always good. Uh, buy a t-shirt or a mug. T-shirt. Yeah, these are nice and good and fit really well. They're comfortable in this hot weather. Mm. And you can subscribe to the show now. Please do so on YouTube and on and tell your friends about us and or all of the above. We will be moving on with more Zoomers coming up in just a second. Right, Mary, it's your Zoomer number two. Okay, so my second candidate for Zoomer of the Week is Patrick Harvey, member of another notorious trio wreaking havoc with their crimes against Scotland. Oh, very good, Mary. Yes. So <laughs> frequent contenders for Zoomer of the Week, we you know, we often have we've got Lorna Slater and Ross Greer, but it's been a wee while since we've had uh, Patrick Harvey, because he's been keeping quite a low profile. We haven't really uh, heard from him. Yeah, well, but, uh, lucky us, he popped up this week to let us know that gas boilers will be banned from new house builds next year. So 2024, um, when they're building new houses, they won't be allowed to put gas boilers in. Uh, what they've got to do instead is to put in these um, what, they, what do they call heat pumps. them? Heat pumps or solar power or, mm. I don't know, maybe you're supposed to have a windmill in your garden or something. I'm not sure. Like the Teletubbies. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't know how your Nunu is going to be powered, though. But anyway, uh, well, so I mean, in a minute, so left here. So yeah. again, this is one of these. Oh, the Greens just make me feel ill. Oh, they really do. They just they come out. I get when you were using the word sanctimonious before, yeah. and they come out with all these sanctimonious policies yeah. about how we're going to save the planet, but they don't care what actually happens to people in the meantime. Um, I've, I, I don't really think they care if there's people on the planet no, or not. No, they don't. That's I, part of it. Yeah. That's part of but, the whole thing. But, you know, he's come out with that this this week. Um, and basically the, the house builders are saying that this is going to, you know, the cost of new housing obviously is going to increase. They have to put in all these heat pumps in houses, and you know, instead of the, ga the gas central heating and so on that they put in now and solar panels and God knows what. Yeah. Um, so there's going to be increased cost to consumers because of the the extra energy costs. Because everything's going to be electric instead of gas mm -hmm. in the house. And as we know, I mean, at the moment, the amount we're paying for electricity is about double what we're actually paying for gas. Right. So, the co I mean, the costs, you know, the new houses themselves. Sorry, Mark. Sorry, right, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm trying to get <laughs> um, ready, sorry. And, but the big problem is that the electricity grids can't yeah. support this. So if people are not having their gas central heating, can you imagine mm -hmm. like in, in the winter when we'll everybody's got their, got their heating on? Yeah. I mean, we can hardly cope as it is at the moment. We're having to use alternative sources of energy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, and so there's going to be a lot of issues with the supply chain. Yeah. So, the, what, so what they're basically saying, the house builders are saying, look, we won't be able to build the houses on time. So all these government targets they have, I think it's 25,000 new houses a year, those are not going to be met. So basically the housing crisis that we already have because of them is going to be much, much worse. So, I mean, this is on top of Patrick Harvey. They also, they have to, all owners, all owner, homeowners in Scotland have to get their housing up to an EPC rating of That's C, right. which right. is really high from 2025. So even, it's not just that new houses being built, it's actually people who already have gas central heating and so on are going to have to replace it with these heat pumps. And they're saying that that could cost about £12,000 per house. So right, £12,000 a house? Yeah. Uh, uh, because you, a, you must meet these standards. Now, for people who live in rental accommodation, that means that landlords 
as well. I mean, if you're a homeowner, you say, oh, well, you know, but it's another nail in the coffin yep. for the rental market as well. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Because yes. all the landlords are really like, I'm not paying £12,000. I'm getting oh, out of the no, housing of market. It's ridiculous. No, no way. And they don't work that all that well, the heat pumps, and, you know, they're not as efficient, I think. Uh, is the gas, no, I mean, we've, we, you mark, you know, we've we've used them when we lived in Japan. We that's what we had, and when we lived in Florida, that's what we had because you can do air conditioning as yes. well as heating, which is nice. But oh, you've got these ugly big units sitting outside your house, and then you've got all the the venting all the way through the yeah. house and everything. It's much much more invasive yeah. than than the current, uh, you know, gas central heating. Well, we could all do with some air conditioning right now, I have to say. That's um, anyway, yes. Yeah, well, he's a perennial. The greens are pre a perennial. Green, that's, I suppose that you'd say that, isn't it? That's a gardening term. Yes. The perennial <laughs> favourite for this, um, the, the show, certainly. It's just, they're always coming yeah. Every week, nonsense. they're it's coming up with something that's damaging to people or businesses. Well, it's, it's like I always say, it's this term, whack-a-mole. They see an issue and they whack it down and any other issues spring up. And it's, they do it every time they did it with the gender recognition reform, bill, HPMA stuff, the same with minimum unit alcohol pricing. Utterly deserious. These guys can't do legislation. They're simply not capable. You can see that from no, Lawrence. No, I've said yeah. that before. No, this le this legislation to... you shouldn't be allowed to do the legislation because it's always a disaster. Yeah. And it's going to cause effects. Just always causes some other effect. They don't care. They care about the virtue signal and they don't care about the knock on effects. And if it hurts people, it stops, gets people out of their cars or it does something like that, other knock on effect, well, so be it for them. Whereas we're right. all struggling to just get on with our lives. It's ridiculous. Yep. So anyway, true. I think what we're going to do, actually, Mary, do you think we should do two, two, or we just do the last one uh, for time? We've got time for two, do you think, guys? All right, okay, well, let's, we'll see. We'll run, maybe run a minute or two over. Right, All right. Well, we might have to run over, so please, those right, that can stay with us, please stay okay. with us. Right. Okay, so coming up, right, right, that was Patrick Harvey. Next yeah. up, it's David. <laughs> Right, David, you're up. Okay, guys. Okay, so the second nomination from me for Zoom of the Week is SNP MP Kirsty Blackman. Now, as much like Angus um, McNeil, Kirsty's had a parliamentary career featuring wall to wall idiocy, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> and in a common debate on the Equality Act earlier this week, she gave the Chamber and the nation the benefit of her considerable intellect. First off, complaining about being called a straight woman, despite the fact that she's married to a man and has children. She doesn't like being called straight, apparently. She found that distasteful. But anyway, she then went on to discuss the definition of biological sex. And in this discussion, Kirsty produced the following memorable outburst. You have the video, Mark. Yes, I do. Um, we've talked about biological sex a number of times. Not one person has been able to explain what biological sex was. The member over there gave a good stab at it, talking about XX and XY chromosomes. I have no idea what my chromosomes are. I have an assumption that they are probably XY, but I don't know. I've not got a clue what my, my chromosomes are. I've got a fair idea of what my genitals look like and how that compares to what other people's genitals look like. But if we're talking about biological sex and we are requiring that to be the definition, there needs to be an actual definition that everybody in this room can agree with. Um, and it is not the case that anybody has been able to provide a definition um, on this. Um, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. And I just remind you all that is a, a member of Parliament. Exactly. Yeah. In yeah, right. so uh, he used to be the, yes. the deputy leader of the party in Westminster. So, But like Kirsty, I actually have a good idea of what my genitals look like. And this is how I found out. Well, don't show them in the show, please. <laughs> That's how I found out. It's yeah. that simple, Kirsty. Maybe she's never looked down. Or maybe, maybe she said she's got a good idea what they look like. Maybe she imagines... Her genitalia looks very different. Maybe she thinks she looks like a porn star and she wants to be a body double in adult movies or something. I don't know. And on that subject, I've got, I can't let this discussion go without a joke. Apparently, Kirsty said to her dad, uh, I want to be an actress. And he said, Well, stand in front of that fire until you're Googie Withers. Oh, how'd you like that? <laughs> It's a bit, a, bit, a, bit, a bit of a niche, that one there. <laughs> we all have to remember who Googie Withers was. Exactly. Yes. I'm, 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 we're, we're in the groove now, as they might say. Anyway, sorry, guys. Yes. To yes. I, I just think, I mean, all I think is this, how did we get to this this point? Yeah, you indeed. know, where an elected MP doesn't know how to determine whether she's a man or a woman. Now, fair enough. She has <laughs> no <laughs> idea what her chromosomes are. Yeah, it's, you right. know, I've actually been reading quite a bit about this recently. And aside from the chromosomal, uh, issue and of course she gets that wrong actually doesn't she yeah she said x y when it's x, x. she says i've got x y which is a man's yes. chromosome exactly right. so she doesn't really. even know that much 
for a start. But the I, I actually watched a couple of videos, and I, and I wasn't to do. I didn't watch this Kirsty thing and then watch them. I was just independent research. And basically, it says the the, the it's the gamete definition, and that basically says you either have plumbing to produce eggs or sperm. And to try and say that sex is a spectrum is like trying to say a coin toss is a yeah, spectrum. It's right. either heads or tails, male or female. And there's an extremely tiny chance that a coin lands on its side and a bit of both. And those are the true, maybe intersex or hermaphrodite people, so incredibly rare. So it's not like a spectrum that they want to say it's like this. It's like, you know, a line that goes up and down one side of one thing and the other. And, the other. Yep. and that's the science, actual science. Now, she studied apparently, or she went to, she matriculated certainly um, at Aberdeen University for medicine. So perhaps she's someone should send her back. Anyway, I mean, it's just very, it's ridiculous. It's just a laughing stock. These people, who elected these people? Well, I mean, we, we say that they're a laughing stock, but you know, it's really embarrassing for Scotland. Uh, yes, absolutely. That these people standing up and representing us. It's, it's I think it's because, it's they, they, exactly, they just think they've, they've been encouraged to think they can say whatever they please for years now they've reached pretty much the end of anything useful they can say so all they can do is talk a load of nonsense about independence or say something if they try and do something of their own volition and come up with their own ideas this is what you get so I, honestly it's just ludicrous but anyway, i'm happy in a way because the, the, all this discussion about gender and identity and you saw joanna cherry sitting behind her going what rubbish and remember they're in the same party it's tearing the snp apart it finished Sturgeon's career as a serious politician. So keep it up, Kirsty, please. And it probably ennobled the police Scotland to arrest Nicola Sturgeon either. They probably thought, oh, this is, we may as well arrest her because she's clearly lost it. I mean, so uh, anyway, carry on, please, all well, of you. Yeah, it makes her look weak, doesn't it? It does. It does. So yeah. Yeah, so uh, uh, unbelievable. So that's that's the Zoom, Zoom of the week nomination number two. Coffee. I think we just have well, to. I think we're just going to stop it there. Yeah, and... I have to say that the, <laughs> the popular opinion in the comments is that it's definitely. Yes, I mean, mine. I had I had a Zoomer of a journalist, Chris Deering, who um, wrote an article saying that Sturgeon has her faults is far from corrupt, but it just pales into <laughs> insignificance yeah. with denying complete biology. Um, yeah. It really, do, it really does. Here we got, we had. Right. You know, maybe there should be some like basic test that you have to do, you know, like a basic yeah. competency test uh, or basic knowledge test that you have to do for if you're going to be an well, MP well, or an yeah, but who, would, who could have ever foreseen that this was the thing? Can Can you tell us uh, how you define a man or woman? <laughs> right? It's actually not such a straightforward question. In fact, in some, in now judging it, but you would never have thought that, right? No. It's a bit of that that would be a question, and actually a political question. I mean, the thing is, uh, we're supposed to have our elected representatives um, make these decisions for a representative democracy. Now, what we need to do is elect better people, right? I yeah. mean, we see yeah. these people, and I think we should be able to recall. I mean, certainly should be able to recall people based on stuff like that. You just go, oh my god, that's just that's an right automatic circle. recall, yeah, 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 stuff like that. But people are allowed to vote for whoever they like, and the vote ultimately does come down to the vote. The, the issue, the blame, ultimately comes down to the voters. There are enough people in Scotland that watch that and think, "All oh, right, okay, yeah, that's yeah. the person I should vote for. She's great. She's sticking it to somebody or other. Whatever. That's that's it. Sticking it to her genitals, as it were. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> right. right. Anyway, so it was a tough field we had. Colin BT can he use the computer? Angus McNeil just doesn't know in. Pat Kane, yeah. the pompous ass. The yeah. DM who was going to mention was embarrassment. Patrick Harvey stick his heat pump up his. You know where yeah. uh, it's a no-brainer because it goes to the person with no brain. Because they see my genitals. Our <laughs> <laughs> extended zoomer of the week and big. And there was um, a lot of good competition yeah, this there was week. A lot of competition mm -hmm. there. Anyway, so we ran a few minutes over, but not too late. Uh, well, thank you for being with us on the show tonight. It's been fun. Absolutely thank you right. for all your comments. And. Um, I will leave you with thought of the week. It's difficult to believe, actually, with all this, all the Zoomerism and all this stuff going on around Nicola Sturgeon and so on. It's only been a few months since she resigned. But we still have a lot of work to do, a lot still to, this is still a long way to go. We'll be here when, every Wednesday to talk with you about it, and it's our pleasure. Thank you very much for being with us, and tune in next Wednesday for more discussion. It's a good night from me. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thanks a lot, everyone. See you next week. Right. Take care. Cheers, everyone.